So I want to welcome you to Ninjaversity, where we help you grow your business like a pro, powered by Web.Ninja. This is PJ Ferguson, the owner and curator of Web.Ninja and Ninjaversity. My goal is really to help you do better at business so that you can succeed and achieve your personal goals. So even though these webinars are all about WordPress, I really feel like I'm helping you achieve your goals and succeed in whatever it is you want to succeed at in business and in life. So this, today's webinar is actually inspired by American Academy of Hand Analysis. The owner is Kay Packard. She wasn't able to join us, but she had some interesting questions about posts and pages that, um, you know, there really is not necessarily a clear answer and there's not just one answer that fits all. So I want to thank Kay for asking her questions and inspiring today's topic. I am going to dive way deeper than she intended and, uh, <laughs> and maybe show you some things that you may not know about WordPress. So again, I want to thank Kay. If you are interested in uh, life purpose, you can actually learn that through your hands, through hand analysis, or at Kay's Academy, you can actually learn how to read the lines in people's hands. It's not palm reading, it's not palmistry, it's not woo-woo crap, it's actual scientific hand analysis. It's very awesome, I've done it with Kay, she's great. Um, she taught me many things about myself that I really, uh, it was nice to hear things that I suspected, but it's, it's good to know some things about yourself to help you get through the tough times in life, so. Uh, when you first log into WordPress, this is what you get, your dashboard. You can see things at a glance. And I'm just gonna jump to the posts area. And as you can see, I'm starting to build a WordPress tutorial website. So uh, if you have questions for WordPress that aren't necessarily an, an hour long topic, that maybe you just wanna step by step in three to five minutes, Send your questions my way and I will create a tutorial for you and we'll put it on the site and get you going. Okay. Um, when you create a post, you can do it several different ways. You can go to the navigation on the left under post, uh, just like pages, there'll be a fly out where you can do add new, or you can actually just click on posts and there's an add new button. And there's this little plus new up here where you can hover over the new and you can create a new post, add a new media to your library, new page or user, okay? So there's actually bunches of different ways you can get to creating a new post. I'm just gonna click add new because where we're gonna start is just by going from top to bottom and showing you a whole bunch of different features that are on this page. One of the biggest struggles that I had with WordPress at the beginning was that there's a lot going on. And that can be frustrating, confusing, and we tend to try just jump to what we need and then ignore the rest. So I hope that just by going from top to bottom and looking at each thing item by item, that'll give you a frame of reference for when you're trying to create a post or a page on your site, that you have these different options available. So at the very top, of every screen in WordPress, you have this little pull out for screen options. This allows you to show or hide different options on the page. So you've got format, categories, tags, and I'm not gonna, we don't, I'm just gonna show them all. But basically you can show or hide things that you want or don't want to be on your page. And I really appreciate this feature because if I don't need it, I don't wanna see it. I don't want it on the page. I don't want it cluttering up my brain has enough going on in there. So you might find this a very valuable thing. Another thing you can do is play with the layout. Perhaps you like a one column where you can just scroll through everything this way, or you have the option of two columns. For instance, I do like the two column just because I can click at everything I want rather than having to scroll. It's a little more convenient for the way I work. And this option right here, the enable full height, it's kind of new, um, but when you're typing, it, it scrolls the content on your page so that actually this area will grow with the content that you're typing. Uh, 
so that you can see more of what you're typing. It, it just for thought process sake, it, that can be a helpful or a hindrance for you and the way you work. Again, it's all about convenience. And I'm just gonna, okay. So I'm gonna create a little line here in the chat so that if you have questions in the chat, I'll know that that's where, um, so I can get that at a glance. So now when you're adding a new post, here is where your title goes. Okay, so that's where I always start as I add my title. Usually I will go ahead and do SEO research to choose a really good title that will get the attention of the search engines. I also try to take that and form a title that is attention grabbing for my viewers because if the search engines see it, great. But if nobody's interested and they don't click, it kind of defeats the purpose. So if you can get the, both, the best of both worlds and find something that gets the, SE, the search engine's attention as well as your reader's attention, that's where you're gonna get some really good traffic to your post. And that's, that's the ideal, right? So when you type in your post, you'll see that a permalink pops up. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but I'm going to take you on a little bit of a loop-de-loo because this permalink is a combination of a few things. First, you have the domain name of your website. For instance, here's wordpresstutorial.ninja. Then you mix that with some permalink settings that are in the settings part of your website. And I'm going to have a tutorial for this coming up soon. If you have, want to go over this in a um, uh, webinar, then we can do that as well. But here's different options for what links will look like on your website when people get to a post or a page. As you can see here, this includes the year, the month, and the day, of, and then the name of the post. And so the reason I'm showing that to you because there's one more setting that people get confused by very easily, which is the slug. So the slug is this last part here, which is the name of your post with a, a couple of dashes in there because that is how search engines space things out in the address bar. You can't actually have a space here. So you couldn't have, um, I'll just type this out up here as an example. You can't have spaces in the address bar. So WordPress fills the spaces in with dashes and search engines read these dashes as a space. So it can start to look like gobbledygook, but if you take a little bit of time and look closely, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. Okay, now, uh, there are two options for entering data into your post, and this is the visual editor. When you're working with the visual editor, it gives you what's called WYSIWYG options, and WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get, okay? And what that <laughs> translates into is, for instance, if you wanna bold some text, you could just click and bold, see what you see is what you get. You can italicize, you can make it into bullets or a, a numbered list. You can turn it into quotes, all sorts of things that you can do at the click of a button. You don't have to know coding to do any of those things. You could just click and get the text to look like what you want it to. So there is aligning to the left, center. Again, this webinar is about just looking at everything. I'm gonna go through these quickly because they are fairly self-explanatory. But you can center the text, you can write and justify it, you can make it into a link. When you create a link, you can just paste a URL here. You can also open up a little link window where you can either you can either type in the URL if it's to another website. You can choose whether it should open in a new tab or the same tab. Depending on what your preferences are, both are good. Or you can look at existing posts or pages that are on your website. So if you're not super tech savvy, 
you can actually scroll through all the content on your site here in this window. And you can even search for stuff. So if you are looking something in particular, you can search for it and it will pop up in this window. You can select it. As you can see, it auto populated this area with the URL, which is the link to that page. And then you just add the link and great on the front end. When people click that, they'll go to where you added the link. I'm just going to undo a lot of that. Here is something called a more tag. In order to get this, I'm going to show this to you on the front and the back end. When you add a more tag, that allows you to select what people see uh, because it improves the scannability. Pardon my error messages. It improves the scannability of your website. So what that means is, and I'll just go ahead and click this button and you can see it adds a little thing called more. Now I'm going to take you to the front end of this website. This is our new title, which you can see this is our new post that we're working on right now. It's actually live on the site, but I don't care because the site is a, this is my work, my play area. Uh, you can see this is the visual editor which is the text that comes before the more tag. But then you can't read this part. This doesn't show up on my blog feed. It actually gives me a link to where I can read the rest, which is this is some additional content. So you can create a really great opening to an article that's attention grabbing. It entices people to read more and then give them the option to actually read more, go to that post specifically and read the whole thing. And again, this is more for scannability. If you want people to be able to see lots of different posts that are on your blog so that they can scan quickly, see what, what jumps out at them, uh, this is a really good option. And again, it's available at a click. I'm gonna see if I can undo that. If not, I'm just gonna delete it. Okay. Now this button right here is called, oh, funny. It used to be called the kitchen sink, but nobody knew what that was. So they've changed it to toolbar toggle. <laughs> so this was the kitchen sink toolbar toggle because it shows or hides some more options, which would be things like strike through. You can actually create a horizontal line. If you want to create some visual space, you can change the, the color of your text. I'm just going to make it orange. This one is a, this paste as text is a very interesting um, function that has worked and not worked really um, throughout WordPress's history. Right now, I think it works pretty well. But let me show you how it works and why you might or might not want to use it. So for instance, I have a lot of clients who will send me articles in a Word doc. Then they'll show it with italics, with underlines, with links, with uh, bolds and headers. Ooh, speaking of headers, I want to show you this. It's important. Uh, here's a, at a click where you can create some headings with bold or larger fonts. Now, when we're talking about SEO, A lot of times when you get a, a website review, it'll say you need more H1 or H2 tags. That's something that confuses a lot of people. H just stands for header or heading as it's called here. And these, when you bold something with a header tag, it, that's something that gets the attention of the search engines as well. Visually, you can see that it looks different. So it gets your reader's attention in certain ways. And so you may or you may not find this useful, but I do, it's always recommended that you have some H1 or H2, H3 tags in your text. And again, just for the fact of getting people's attention of this is a new section, headings are useful for the visual aspect. Okay, like readers find it very useful. So use some headers, see if you can throw some SEO into it, 
I'm going to take this back to paragraph. Paragraph is just normal text. So now I want to introduce, we've been in the visual editor, and I want to show you the text editor. Text editor is where you can actually use coding to uh, formulate the, the visual appearance of your text. So for instance, if I take this text and I make it bold, here it just looks bold. If you go to the text editor, you can see it added some HTML tags to it, which is the strong tag. Right now I'm going to add an italics HTML tag to it. And when I click back to the visual, you'll see, oh, it's bold and italic. So you can actually do just about any kind of basic HTML coding. These days you can do a lot of CSS coding. You can do a little bit of JavaScript, but this is one place where I want you to really tune in and pay attention to, um, this is an important detail, is that you cannot put just anything in this text editor. It might seem like it, but what happens is that if you switch from the text to the visual editor, WordPress will automatically delete certain texts or type of code, okay? So even if you create something in text and you save it, you could add some JavaScript, for instance, and then update. And on your website, it would look fine. But if for some reason you happened, this is a weird WordPress quirk, if you happened to add some extensive coding to the text editor, then click on visual, that would delete some of that very potentially delete some of that uh, coding. So if you're gonna add some pretty intensive coding to the text editor or to a post or page, you really wanna make sure that WordPress can handle it first before you go live with that page or that post. Because otherwise you can miss out on something, some uh, function might not work anymore, and you won't even know about it unless you tested it out first to make sure that WordPress could handle it. So. If WordPress does have a problem with that, as far as the visual editor is concerned, there are ways around that and you can work with someone like me to um, solve the issue and find a way to make sure that your code works um, within your visual editor. A lot of times that comes down to using short codes and short codes are more advanced stuff, so we're not gonna go over that here. I'm just gonna check in with the chat and see if anybody has questions, nothing so far. Now, um, since I took that little side trip there, uh, I'm going to get back to this paste as text. And I'm going to just show you what that's for first. Because again, if somebody sends you something or you like to create things in something like a Word doc first, you're going to want to have bolded text. You might have bulleted. Um, you might have quotes. And it, it would be super nice to just copy and paste that over, right? Well, you can do that. Oops, I need to talk on top of that. Okay, you can do that in WordPress. So you can see that it kept my bullets, kept, it my, kept my bolded text. And why I took us to the text editor is because what that translates into a lot of times, especially if you're working with Word, is it starts to throw in a whole bunch of unneeded coding. Now, it's not necessarily always bad, but for starters, I'm a purist. I think if the code doesn't need to be there, don't have it there. But what you also end up with is duplications and stuff. So this doesn't need to be there. This doesn't need to be there. Now you're starting to end up with a whole bunch of coded whatever. Now, if you're copying and pasting from Word, Word has a lot of metadata. If I was to copy and paste this from Word, you would have just loads and loads of this crazy, crazy code that isn't needed and sometimes can even mess up the content of your page. So by using this paste as text, I'll just show you, this is when I pasted by normal. I'll just delete all that. Now, by pasting as text, what you have is just text, okay? 
this is going to be much easier to go back and add some of these elements like the bolded text we wanted here these bulleted items that we wanted here that's going to be much easier to add from scratch than trying to delete a whole bunch of gobbledygook so that's what this feature is here now if you did happen to um <laughs> paste this here and you ended up with a bunch of gobbledygook, this little eraser clears all of the formatting. So you saw how the bolded went away. It kept the bullets, but on the text end, you can see, okay, it, it got rid of all of that extra weird code that we didn't need. Okay, so special characters. This is if you've got something that isn't on your keyboard. And you want to add something like maybe an X out or here you've got some fractions that, you know, if you were to do it with your keyboard would look like that. So special characters can be very useful. These um, you can also get through your ASCII keys, um, which are <laughs> on your keypad with your alt button. And that's going to be a, like a little bit more, uh, advanced feature that that we can talk about or if you have questions then i'll do a tutorial on it uh, when you want to do an indent you could do that a click of a button back then or you can undo okay so we spent lots of time here talking about the WYSIWYG. that was actually more than i wanted to go into and you're probably asleep by now so we will move on uh, over here you have your publish options which i think are also very important to know about but most people don't or they're confused and so they just ignore it. Published means it shows up live to the public on your site. Pending review means that it's available for somebody like an editor or perhaps, perhaps another administrator to review. So if you have somebody who adds content and you wanna review it before it goes live, they can set it to pending review so that you can take a, take a look at it later. Draft is very similar, just that if you have a bunch of thoughts and I use draft all the time because I have ideas of, oh, hey, I should write a post about this. I'll write it as a draft or just throw some ideas into it so that I can look at it later. But then I can save it and it's completely private. Only I can see it. Um, and that way I can come back to it later and add more content, content to it when I have time. Okay. This visibility is a fun one. Uh, now, if your post is public, you can make it sticky, quote unquote sticky, which is which means that as you add other posts to your blog, if you think that this the content of this post is really important, then you can actually have it show up at the top and keep showing up at the top. So you might have two, three, four articles that you want to be available to people um, regardless of adding other content to your blog. And so that, that that gets more attention, it gets more views, it gets more visits and more attention. So you can make it sticky or non-sticky, which non-sticky just means it acts like normal. As you add new content, it moves on down the line. You can actually make a post or page password protected. I'm just gonna show you what that looks like here. I'm gonna make it published. I'm going to update this. So what this shows up like on the front end is you'll see a protected, which means it's password protected. And here's the title of our article. Now, if I type in the password and hit enter, then I can actually view the content of that title or of that article, which there's nothing there. So it shows nothing here, but that's if you saw protected, then your people would know, Oh, Hey, I need a password in order to view that. Now you may or may not want that. I, I don't think that's super professional looking unless you've got a very specific purpose for it. So one other option that you have available is private. This is going to be a much more, professional way, I think, of displaying content on your site that you want to be protected in some way. So I'm gonna change this to private, update that. 
and then show you what it looks like on the front end. It'll show private and then the name of the title. And when you click on it, it's actually, you're gonna have to, in order to see this content, be logged in. I'm logged in, so it's not actually showing what people see. People will have to, um, actually, let me just go ahead and do this for you. Oops, that page can't be found, right? So to the public, they're, they're not gonna be able to see what that is, sorry. So private posts are not gonna show on the site at all. And why you might wanna do that is if you want people to become members of your blog. So for instance, you can encourage people to become um, members of your community. And it can be a very simple community where it is content driven. So by becoming a sub subscriber of your site, you can allow people to sign up and then this content then becomes available only to people who are subscribers. A very quick and easy way to create a, a free, easy membership for your site. And what that lets you know is I have a community of people so interested in my information that they want to become part of, of what I'm doing here online. And you can keep some of your best information private for those people. And that can actually encourage people to sign up. It's kind of like having an, uh, an email list that you're growing, but it's online, it's interactive, and people are interacting with you on your website in that way. And this actually works for a lot of bloggers who are trying to build their community. So this can be a really great way to go as far as creating private posts on your blog. I'm gonna turn that back into public. And then the last option we have here is publishing. You can, the, the default setting is to publish instantly, but you can have something published in the, in the future. You can actually have it pu published in the past, which can be useful depending on where you want information to show up. But say you want to write three posts in one sitting and have it look like you've, you're blogging every week. You can actually schedule this a week in advance so if I put this to publish on the 27th, this article would publish next week and I would have it publish at 9 a.m. Then I could save that and it would show that it's gonna schedule for the future, okay? So uh, that's it for your publishing area. Next is the format. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because it's extremely dependent on the theme that you're using and whether it supports formats or not. Asides, images, videos, quotes, links, galleries, audio. These are all just different ways that a post can show up here on the front end, which is the blog feed of your, of your site. And different things, different themes will make these formats look pretty in certain ways. So again, it really just depends on the theme that you're using and how it displays those different types of information. So before you choose any of these, you'll wanna see what it looks like on the front end first. Now excerpt is a fun little area. Excerpt is just a little bit of text. Again, I don't, <laughs> I don't multitask very well. I can't talk and type at the same time. Now excerpts will show up in different places, again, depending on your theme. They can show up as metadata, which is recommended for most themes. Um, it can show up, I'm gonna see if this theme does it. Bear with me here. Okay, this theme doesn't, but on some themes, you'll the excerpt will actually show up here in the blog feed. So excerpts are a place where you can control what shows up and where. And again, you wanna tune into your theme and what it can handle and what it cannot handle. Okay, I'm gonna go right over here to the categories. 
You can add a whole bunch of new categories. I don't recommend that. I, I recommend five to 10 for SEO reasons as well as if people have too many options, it just gets confusing and they're more likely to go away. Um, you can choose which categories are by default. If you're like me and sometimes forget to actually pick a category, you can choose which category is defaulted. If you go here to the settings and writing here, you can add new categories. It's very quick and easy. Not going to actually do that this time. And over here you have tags, categories and tags are confusing for people. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the chat area uh, because Categories are going to be more fixed. You should again have five to ten of those tags. You can have any number of, but you should also use them very strategically with SEO behind it for the most part as to why you're using certain tags. But tags are going to be general topics that you think people are going to be interested in. So if you're writing something about a celebrity, you would have the celebrity's name or movie title, thing, you know, things that are bigger topics that people might be interested in clicking. And I'm just going to keep on going on the right here. Featured image. This is what's going to show up in the blog feed. So if you add a featured image, now featured image again is going to be theme driven. It may or may not show up in your blog feed. It may or may not be cropped. You may want to think very carefully of what kind of image you use because of how your theme may or may not crop them or size them. This theme obviously doesn't size the image at all. It just shows you whatever image in its normal size. Okay. Um, so to keep your blog looking nice, you actually want to be pretty strategic about what images you show, how your theme displays it, and then how it looks for your people when they're visiting your website. Okay. Discussion. This is whether or not somebody can leave a comment on your post or page. If it's a post, I tend to allow the comments. If it's a page, I try to turn that off because if people are interacting on pages, that's actually really confusing. So since this is a post, we're gonna keep that discussion alive. Now let's go back over to the left, trackbacks. Trackbacks are if somebody posts a, a page uh, from your site, for instance, onto their site, and they're part of a group that's called Pingomatic, or you know, they're part of a blogging system, that will actually send you a track back that says, oh, hey, somebody posted a link on their site that goes back to your page. Now, this can be a good or a bad thing. So I would say do uh, pay attention to the track backs that you might get. And just another quick little thing is that for convenience sake, you can minimize or maximize each of these little widgets, depending on, again, convenience, how you like to work. Okay. Custom fields. Another thing that's confusing for people, it's more of an advanced thing. You tend to have to be a coder in order to use it. But if you do want to do some custom features on a post or a page, you can, this might be how. But for the most part, that would be something that I would go up here for screen options and hide. I would uncheck the custom fields, okay? I'm just leaving them checked because we're talking about everything here. Author, that's if you have different authors on your site, you can actually write stuff and post it for someone else. I'm not going to show my author just because that's got my login information. Um, again, this is the slug. This is our new title, what I have it here, but you can change the slug and you may have specific reasons for doing this. This is more of an advanced feature, but if I change the slug here, here's a new slug. You can see that this changes from, this is our new title, which is the title to here's a new slug. There may be reasons for why you want to do this but be very careful when or why you do it. And for instance, and I'm gonna take us back to um, the Academy of Hand Analysis here. This is what prompted Kay's question because she has some pages with titles on them that she wants to be able to edit the title, but not necessarily change 
the title here in WordPress. And this is something that's handled by themes in different ways. And so you want to check your theme and see how does, how does my theme handle this? How much control do I have over what shows as far as the title of a page? Uh, because you can, you can change the title of a page by changing the title here, um, depending on your theme. But if your theme doesn't allow you to do that, then you might want to have somebody like me just remove the title altogether. And then what you can do is you could then add welcome to the top of your page. Because then you could add that manually and have total control over it while leaving this. So for instance, I might want this to just be the home page. Okay, but I might want my homepage to say welcome as the title. Well, if my theme doesn't handle that, then I've got a problem and I need a, I need a solution. So that is why I wanted to pull that out is just because uh, you may have that kind of a problem and need a solution for it. So that would be the solution. Okay, let me see if there are any questions. Okay, so we'll keep on going. Great, so now this is an interesting thing to me as far as um, if somebody leaves comments, you can actually see them here. You may want to interact with your comments here <laughs> or you may not. There's another place over here called comments and that's where you can see what all the comments are and interact, approve, change, edit, deny, or mark as spam. Uh, so I think it's a little bit funny that, the, that there's a comments area here, but anyway. Now revisions. This is a history of all the different changes that have ever been made on this post or a page. Uh, let me go ahead and save this. Every time you click this update button, it adds a new revision. You can see the revisions right here. And if we click to look at them, there's a little slider that shows a compare. Okay, that didn't work. Hold on a minute. This little slider shows a comparison of the different changes that you've made. You can compare the old with the new, and you can view the entire history. I have actually found this a fairly useful tool, especially working with clients who may have made a change that uh, broke their page, and I needed to go back to a previous um, revision or a previous version of the post. So this can actually be really, really nice feature if you do break it and you can go back by restoring a certain version of the article. But the caveat to that is that if you're somebody who saves your work really often, you know, you may make add a period to your content and then save it because, you know, like if you're like me, I've got like saving PTSD from Word uh, because I may go create an hour worth of text. I'm so into my writing that I forget to save it and the autosave didn't save it that um, something happens and I lose all the data, like it crashes. That can happen in WordPress. So you may end up with 80 revisions to one basic article. Now that's actually prohibitive because now your database is getting overloaded with all just bloated with all these extra revisions that really aren't useful. So if you find that your database is getting overloaded with revisions, we can actually make changes that will, and there are plugins that will limit the number of revisions to a certain amount. So you can limit it to say 10 or 15 revisions. And if you are a hyper saver like I am, you can see I've already got a whole bunch of revisions or versions saved here, um, you might want to do something like that, like limit the number of revisions that are allowed. Okay. Um, so that's actually, that's actually everything for the posts and the pages. The pages are really going to be the same or very similar. Um, this little option is nice if you want to get rid of all of the extra stuff so that you can just focus on 
your writing. And you can bring back that info really easy. And so I'm going to open up the floor to questions. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I know that this is a huge topic and I've really just gone through the nitty gritty line by line boring stuff that people uh, may want to ignore on purpose. Uh, but a lot of these different details are useful for different reasons. So um, if you're watching this video after the fact, please leave your questions in the comments below and I will actually answer questions there. And I might bring the topics back for another webinar so that we can talk about that at the end of uh, another webinar, just so that we can have meaningful dialogue that answers your questions. Because that is the whole point of these get togethers is to answer questions that you might have and help you clear away any struggles that you're having with WordPress so that you can get the most out of it. WordPress is a very powerful tool for your website and for your business. And I, I wanted to do these webinars because rather than see you struggle with WordPress, struggle with making changes on your website, I want to help you get over those. It shouldn't be frustrating. It shouldn't be costly. Um, operating your business and your website should be a joy and it should actually help you grow your business. So that's the goal of these webinars. So if we have any questions, any comments, feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, well, I wanna thank you both for being here. I wanna thank all of you after the fact who are watching this. And I hope that you learned something useful about posts and pages. Oh, we have a question from Inspired Nutrition. What plugins would you recommend for managing the number of revisions? I'm not actually gonna tell you a plugin because I tend to do that by coding myself in the back end. But what I will tell you is do a search for uh, WordPress plugins limit revisions. Then the things that you look for are what plugins have been downloaded a lot and have the best um, ratings and reviews by people because that's going to be the best way to go. So something that's been, let me actually, while we're here, we'll just go, go there. I'll just walk you through the process because that's what we're here for, right? Okay. This one's got 2,000 active installs. This one's got 600. So for instance, this would be the one that I try first. I'm not going to officially recommend it because I haven't used it myself. But this one's got a fair amount of downloads. It's got three, meh. That's an okay amount of, of <laughs> reviews. I'd actually like to see, you know, 20 to plus. Because if it's three, it could be the programmers who are rating their own um, plugin. So this might be one that I try. This one might try. Um, let me go ahead and do some research for you and then I can email you with some thoughts on the, on the matter. Um, and then the other option is that we could actually just go in and code your site for you so that it limits the revisions. And that's what I tend to recommend because the fewer plugins you use on your site, the better plugins can start to bog down the performance of your website. So if it's something that can be coded easily, something like revisions, that's what I tend to recommend rather than a plugin. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you just want to solve the problem, don't want to pay someone to do the coding, uh, then yeah, plugin is the way to go. Hope that answers that question. And any other questions that you might have? Alrighty. Well, again, I want to thank you for joining. I want to thank everyone for watching after and um, join us next week. Um, I'm actually 
next week's topic is going to be categories and tags. Yes, I actually love this one. I wanted to point out this page just because it is meant to be everything you need in order to join us on the webinars. It's going to tell you what's coming up so that you can plan ahead. These little buttons add, allow you to add the event to your calendar so that you can be reminded conveniently. This button will take you to the most recent recording, which the, in later today, it's going to have today's recording. And if you would share the love, I would super appreciate it because we want to grow this community. I want Web Ninja to be a community event, people helping people, people, help, people helping people succeed. And I think that when we work together, then we can all rise above what we would be able to accomplish by ourselves. So again, I thank you for participating. I thank you for asking your questions and for being here. And I hope to see you next time.